that gave you your chance? Are you really that company that gave you your chance? Are you really going to move that company to the side because the company that told you to wait five years, you're going to give them a chance? Or What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Hold up. Do you or do you not recognize this a man standing here? Yeah. Yeah, I know he's a man. Good. Drivers, I don't know much. I don't know much about trucking. I, I just know what I know about trucking. And there's a lot of things that has changed in the trucking sphere. A lot of stuff has changed. New restrictions, new regulations, new laws in place. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. New stuff that's making trucking harder and harder for the average person to get in. Now, look, I know you guys has talked about the FMCSA's clearinghouse. A lot of you guys are afraid to take the hair follicle test because you guys indulge a lot. Smoke weed every day. And now after been smoking for a long time and you just now stopped, now you want to get into an industry that is heavily regulated against uh, drug use. And yes, yes, marijuana is in this industry is considered drug use. Smoke weed every day. So when you come with the excuse of it's medical, that's understandable. It's legal. Yes, it is. It is legal in a lot of states now. You can just go to any dispensary, get whatever, uh, get whatever that suits your fancy. Smoke weed every day. And you go home and you enjoy it. Some companies, you know, not trucking specifically, some companies allow you to smoke weed every day. It really doesn't matter because you're in a state that is legalized it now. You smoke cigarettes, you know, you go outside for a smoke break. Now that smoke weed every day is legalized in your state, you can go outside and have a smoke break. But you can't do that in a heavily regulated industry such as trucking. Now, a lot of you guys don't realize that the hair follicle tests do go back a little bit further than the regular urine tests. Let's say you let's say you hit it, you know, you was like, okay, I did it last week or something like that, and you wait about a month and it don't show up in your urine. Cool, you're good. There ain't no problem. You did that. And you say you just want to get the rest of it out of your system before you come into this industry to get your life changed specifically. But then you go to a school. You, you say you don't have no money. And you decide to go to a trucking school that is sponsoring the school, meaning that they're going to have to take a drug test. Because they're going to, when you go to their school, you're considered... An employee, but not an employee because some some of the training don't pay you. Others do, like rail and other trucking companies. They do give you like a little bit of money every week for going through their CDL training, meaning that they have to bring you on as an employee in order to pay you. Now you have to take the standardized drug pre-employment drug test, which is required by the FMCSA. You go in there and up all of a sudden, they don't do the urine. You know you're good because 
the last time you smoked smoke weed every day was maybe about a month ago, two months ago, and you, and you, and you know it's not going to show up in your urine, so you're good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. But, lo and behold, they hit you with the hair follicles. And you looking at that like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Now, I, I didn't know you was going to hit me with the hair follicles. Um, Maybe this is a bad idea. Stop there, driver. Because if you leave and refuse the drug test... Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be put in the FMCSA clearinghouse for refusing the pre-employment drug screening. Now, not to say the urine part, but the hair follicles is still part of the pre-employment drug screening. And even though hair follicles is not required by the FMCSA, but refusing the drug test is part of the FMCSA. Ooh, see that catch-22 right there? Now, you're not going to get popped for uh, FMCSA because you flunked the hair follicle test. That's just company by company, right? But you will get popped for for refusing the drug test because you just now figured out that instead of the urine, they do the hair follicles. And you already know that you may or may not pass the hair follicles because you just, the last time you indulge Smoke weed every day. was a couple of months ago. All right, so let's fast forward, driver. Unfortunately, you didn't pass the hair follicle test. Sorry about that. Now that you didn't pass the hair follicle test, does it mean, does it mean that you can't get, that you still can't get a job in the trucking industry? Because the last time that you indulge was a couple of months ago and it did not show up on your urine so you're good you're not in the clearinghouse you're not you're not in the clearinghouse you're just blacklisted okay listen now you just blacklisted from other companies that may now look on your DAC report if it's reported on your DAC report that you did not pass the hair follicle test. Sorry about that. That was the wrong button. We, we, we can't clap on the fact that you didn't pass the hair follicle test. You're upset because now the company that you wanted to get with is not going to hire you. And now you're going to, you, you, you jumping through hoops to find companies that don't do hair follicles so that you can get in the industry and start changing your life. That's the clap. There you go. A lot of these companies, RTI, Swift, Snyder, a lot of these companies, U.S. Express, are now doing hair follicles. But let's fast forward, driver. Let's say that you, you're you you're now in the FMCSA program. You got to go through the program. That's got to come out of your pocket. You got to pay for it. Now you got to go through the steps, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps to appease the FMCSA, all right, to appease the FMCSA after you get your return to duty status. Now you got to find a company that will accept you so that you can prove to FMCSA that, you know, you're working and they're helping you with your return to duty status. 
That's where the problem comes into play. Now, listen, you're, you, you flunked the drug test. You, you flunked the urine. Now you're in the FMCSA. You just, let's just say, let's just fast forward everything. And you just got finished coming out of the SAP program. Now you need a return. Now you need a company to help you with your return to duty status. That's where the problem comes into play, driver. And the problem that comes into play is this. This is 2023. A lot of companies now, you got to be cleared of the SAP program as after you come out of the SAP program, you know, the steps, the return to duty, they won't bring you on for five years. Five years. It has to be five years since the event that put you into that put you in the SAP program in the first place. Of course you're not there yet. Of course you're not there yet. Because you just got into the program. So you need five years. This is 2023. It has to be 2028. Who makes my coffee? Who makes my coffee? Will someone explain to me why I'm the worst day of my life? My coffee tastes like shit. Your coffee is normally made by Cato. Who the hell is that? <laughs> so that job that you want, you can't apply for that job until 2028 but by the time 2028 rolls around you probably might be driving for a particular company anyway because there are companies out there that will bring you on you know that will give you a second chance so are you going to really wait five years for that one company that you wanted to get in there you probably might be doing good with the company now that that gave you your chance are you really that company that gave you your chance? Are you really going to move that company to the side because the company that told you to wait five years, you're going to give them a chance? Or are you going to stay with the company that did give you a chance? And especially if they're not messing over on you. Maybe they're a good company. Maybe that company is, is good to you. They gave you your chance that the one company that you wanted didn't give you the chance. All you wanted was the chance. All you wanted was to get with RTI. All you wanted to do was to get with Swift. All you wanted to do was to get with Snyder. But none of them gave them the chance. But they did come back and say, hey, driver, come back to us in about five years, and then maybe we'll see what we can do. Bro, I got with the second hand, I got with the second chance company that gave me my chance, and I'm doing well with them. Why would I go to you five years later if I'm doing good? with the company now that gave me my chance that said hey let me see what this driver can do five years is a long time man i i can understand if you would have came to me and say hey um maybe one year maybe two years because you know within that two-year time period you could see if the company that the second chance company that gave you the chance to see if it actually works for you, right? Within that two year period, you would get your experience. You will be making a little bit of money and maybe that company would treat you fair. But then that company that said, yo, come back to us in two years. You could probably negotiate how much money you want to make because you got your two years experience in. So now coming in as a new driver, you coming in as an experienced driver and you can you can uh, uh, dictate how much you can get. So instead of getting 38 cent a mile as 
a new driver being in the SAP program, you can come in as an experienced driver making about 60, 60 plus cent a mile. Think about that. I mean, I, I think, I honestly think that the companies that's over here telling you that you have to wait five years, please don't hesitate to check back with us. Because you know our hiring requirements change throughout the years. Please don't hesitate. No, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to hesitate. Five years, bro? Hell, five years, I probably might be my own owner-operator by then. Why would I need to check back with you in five years because you didn't give me my opportunity now? I think what they need to do is to lower that criteria from five to maybe two. That's what I think. Drivers, tell me what you think about that in the comments below. Who is that DJ like that?